Hi, this is Dave with NAPCO Tech Support. Today we are going to go over the three most common local connection problems you can run into while using the Quick Loader software. Please feel free to pause the video at any time if it makes it easier to follow along. The first and most common issue you can have with connecting Quick Loader locally to a Gemini panel is caused by using the wrong cable. The older PCI Mini kits were shipped out with a Sabrent USB to RS-232 converter. The new PCI Mini kits come with this Salig converter. If you have a converter that isn't one of those two brands, the first thing we would suggest is trying one of the cables we provide. As a field tech, you may end up with a couple different cables in your bag, so check to see if you have a Sabrent or a Salig. The second most common issue you can have with connecting Quick Loader to a Gemini panel is when you get an error that says, cannot connect to port, port in use. This is most often caused by having the wrong port number set in your modem settings. To solve this issue, first you have to open your device manager on your PC. I'm demonstrating this on a Windows 11 computer. It's basically the same thing on a Windows 10 computer. Go to your Windows search and type device manager. You will most likely see device manager pop up before you even finish typing. Click on device manager. It will take a couple seconds to load the plugin. After it finishes loading, it will populate in alphabetical order in the center. Go down to the section that says Ports, COM, and LPT. Underneath, you should see your cable listed with a COM number. To verify this is the correct cable, unplug the cable, verify the COM port goes away, plug it back in, and verify it comes back. Note which COM port number your PC has assigned to the cable. Go back to your quick loader. If you are in an account, click on close account first. You want to make sure you are in the account list. Click on file, then modem settings. In the modem settings window, set both the modem port and the PCI 2000 mini port to the same port number you identified in the previous step. This is important. Both of them must be the same. Sometimes when you go into your device manager, you won't see ports, COM, and LPT listed. That can only be a handful of things. Either your cable isn't working anymore, your PC is unable to detect the cable, or your drivers have not been installed for the cable. If your computer has an internet connection, it will automatically download and install the drivers when you first plug it in. If it doesn't, you can go to the NAPCO Tech Library by going to tech.napcosecurity.com and download the drivers. Once at the tech library, you will need a login to be able to download the file. If you don't have an account, just click register and go through the registration process. The registration can take up to 24 hours to get approved. If you would like to expedite the process, call our tech support line and we will expedite that for you. Once you are logged in, hover over software downloads, then choose NAPCO. When you are on the software downloads page, click on where it says filter by product type and choose the option accessories. You will now see the USB drivers for the NAPCO USB to RS-232 serial COM port cable. Click on the option to download the driver. When your driver is finished downloading, go to your downloads folder. You can get to your downloads folder by clicking on the file explorer icon on your taskbar, and then you will have downloads as an option on the left navigation pane. If you don't see the navigation pane on the left, you can usually turn it on in the view settings by going to view, show, then click on navigation pane. Before you install your drivers, make sure you unplug the cable from the computer. Once in your downloads folder, 
find the file named USB underscore drivers dot zip. Right click on the folder and choose the option extract all. An extraction will open. Make sure the box for show extracted files when complete is checked so it will automatically open the folder after it is done extracting the file. Click extract. Now that the drivers are done extracting, you will see a folder named USB underscore drivers. Double click on the folder icon and now you will see two folders, one for Salig and one for Sabrent. If you have the older Sabrent cable, you will double click on the folder that says Sabrent drivers earlier and then double click on the file that says CDM 20814 underscore setup.exe. It will be the only thing in the folder. So if it just says CDM 20814 underscore setup and not have the .exe at the end, it's just a setting on your PC and it's the same file. Don't worry about it. If you have a Salig cable, then double click on the folder that says Salig drivers later, and then double click on the folder that says easy install method. After that, double click on the file that says CDM 212228 underscore setup dot exe. After you have finished installing your drivers, plug your cable back in and check and see if it shows in the device manager now. If it still doesn't show, then either your cable has stopped working or you have an issue with your PC. The third most common issue you can have when connecting Quick Loader to a Gemini panel is when you attempt to connect, you see the software attempting to make a connection, but when it gets to obtaining panel type, it times out and keeps trying until it eventually fails. This is most often caused by using the wrong USB to RS-232 converter cable that we discussed earlier. It can also be caused by setting only one of the two options in your modem settings. To clarify, if you only set your modem port and not your PCI 2000 mini port or vice versa, this will cause the obtaining panel type timeout. Another cause of this timeout is the config jumper on the panel. When attempting to download to your panel, make sure the jumper is set to normal and not config. Remember, normal is in the up position, config is the down position. If your config jumper is in the up position, but the red light is on, that means the panel is trying to dial out, and that could be the cause as well. The issue could also be caused by the panel itself, but it's less likely, so you should try all these other troubleshooting steps before jumping to that conclusion. That wraps up our three most common local connection problems you can run into while using the Quick Loader software. For more information regarding troubleshooting, go to our NAPCO Tech Library at tech.napcosecurity.com.